Hi there, welcome to this Java tutorial from Rethus.com. In this tutorial, let's look at for loop. Uh, we'll use a basic for loop and not an enhanced for loop in this example, just to get used to the basic for loop. And then in the next video, we'll look at uh, enhanced for loop. So let's get started with this example. Um, what we want to do here, as it we did in other loop videos, is we want to do some of an array using for loop. So what we have is a class called for loop example defined, where we have a method called find sum of array defined. So we want to define this method sum of array. What we want to do is whatever the content of this array, we want to loop around it and then return the sum of the array back. So oh, let's say if I, if I array contains values 5 plus 8 plus 12 plus 25, 12, sorry, 5, 8, 12 and 25, the output I would expect is 5 plus 8 plus 12 plus 85 that's basically the sum of elements from the array so that's the problem which we want to solve and now let's look at how we can solve it using a basic for loop um, one word of caution at the start itself uh, the enhanced for loop uh, helps you to do what we are doing in a much easier way but uh, it's always good to have an understanding of the basic for loop before we go to the enhanced for loop so let's get started with the basic for loop. Uh, the syntax for uh, for loop looks something of this kind. I would split the statement into multiple lines just to make it easy for you to understand. The first part of a for loop is called the initialization part. Uh, the syntax would look something of this kind, initialization, and then you would have the condition, and then you would have the increment, and then you'd have your loop body. So this is the body of the for loop. So a for loop looks something similar to this. You'd have at the start initialization and then a followed by a semicolon and then a condition followed by a semicolon and then the increment. So now let's, uh, what we want to do is loop around an array. So what I will do is create a temporary variable called sum to hold the sum and also I'll create a temporary variable for length of the array as well. So length is equal to array dot length. That's basically what I'm going to store in here. What I want to do is uh, I want to loop over all the elements of the array. So for uh, I would want the good thing about a for loop is I can directly define the loop variable here along with the initialization. So I'm saying int counter is equal to zero. That's basically our initialization part. So this is our initialization which is part of the for loop, this gets executed only once when the for loop is executed for the first time. That's when uh, this is executed and the condition gets executed every time in a for loop, including the first time. So uh, what we want to do is while the condition which we want to put in is while counter less than length. So while the num the counter is less than the length of the array I would want to keep doing it so this is what we call the condition so this condition check happens every time I mean every time a for loop is executed the condition is checked if the condition result is true the condition body is executed otherwise the uh, like loop is uh, like otherwise the uh, loop is exited and the next statement after the loop is executed and then as an increment part what we want to do here is increment the counter variable. So that's basically a simple for loop for you. That's a very simple example of a for loop. And oh, I don't need a semicolon at the end of the uh, increment. So that's basically your increment. And now I can go ahead and do uh, sum is equal to, I want to add, keep adding the each element in the array to the sum. So array to get the element number counter so I want the first when the counter is 0 I would add the first element when the counter is 1 it would add the second element this would go on until this condition is false this condition is false when we, all the elements in the array are exhausted and then we would want to return the sum back so that's basically how a for loop looks and gets executed let's try running this test and make sure that whatever we have implemented is working fine run as JUnit test. Okay, that's good. So the test which we have written here at the bottom of the screen 
uh, passing in an array with 5, 8, 12, and 25, we are get able to get the output as 5 plus 8 plus 12 plus 25, that's 50. So that's the output which we get when this uh, method is executed. Uh, the other thing as we discussed is I don't need to have all this stuff in different lines. So typically when we do it in our projects, this is how the code would look like. So let's remove all the space out and remove all the unnecessary comments out and there you go. So this is how a for loop can be used. We are creating more videos as we speak and if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.